Hello, welcome and good evening. And today I want to handle a topic that I get asked uh, quite a bit, and that's the question of what can I actually do with a Raspberry Pi. I mean, um, most people probably know it's a computer. You can do basically anything you want to do with it, but most of us already have a laptop or a desktop PC or something like that, and they are wondering, well, even if I bought one, or maybe they already have bought one, they have no idea what project actually to tackle with. And I think there are a few things that are interesting to almost everyone who uses a computer, and I'll show those. And there's, of course, um, the other things that, especially the Raspberry Pi, is well suited for because, after all, it was made as a very cheap computer for learning how to program, for learning how computers work, how electronics work, and we will also have a look at a few of those topics. There are, of course, many, many dozens, hundreds of applications for the Raspberry Pi, and today I will only show very few, very select things, and maybe in a later episode I will show some of those in more depth, or show some other ones if there's enough interest. But today we want to focus on a few select things, some of which are, as I said, interesting for everyone who has a computer and a home network, and some that are more related to the educational nature of the Raspberry Pi. Here I have the Raspberry Pi 4, which I already did a review on a couple of weeks back, and uh, by now I already also have uh, the official case. However, um, for some things I will leave this open because I need to access the GPIO header. But you can actually close it up pretty neatly. It's a nice case. Note, however, that the Raspberry Pi 4 usually runs very hot when it's under heavy load. And um, this case and this installation doesn't come with any cooling so it will throttle down, it will show a little temperature icon if it runs too hot, and it will downclock the CPU so that it doesn't overheat. That being said, let's get started. The first thing that we want to try out is Pi Hole. Um, and this is something that is interesting for everyone who has a home network and a Raspberry Pi. And basically it's a, a little software for blocking all the ads in your local network. So basically all the mobile devices, smartphones, laptops, desktop PCs, whatever you have in your local home network will be free of advertisements on web browsers and stuff. And uh, this is actually pretty pretty neat, and installation is very simple. Um, here is already the uh, command line that you need to do. Basically you download a small install script and run through bash. Let's do that here. So um, I'm running this here on my iMac, but we are locked into the Raspberry Pi 4 via SSH. And yeah, let's just do that. Okay, here we are. The checking all the dependencies and it's installing a few more packages that you need and it takes only a few more clicks here. This uh, The pie hole is free but powered by your donations. Yes, thank you. We might consider donating. And it needs a static IP address to function properly. That's fine. Yeah, I will use uh, Wi-Fi because I don't have uh, Ethernet wired up. The upstream, let's take OpenDNS instead of Google. And these are the lists, the blocking lists. Let's take all of them, that's fine. It also blocks against malware and stuff, so that's a nice side effect. The static address, I will install it here, but I actually have a second Pi already running with this. I'm just walking you through the um, installation. 
So here it says, I detected that I have this IP address and this gateway, and it will differ on your network, obviously, but you should write those numbers down or make a screenshot, because this is where you will reach your PyHole server. And um, it says there might be an IP conflict. Yeah, okay, acknowledged. And my network also supports IPv6. And there's an associated very long address with that, but you don't have to use IPv6. Some older routers only do IPv4. But that's not terrible. And we want to have the web admin interface. Oh yes, we want that. And it will install a web server. Yes, please do that, because on our installation we don't have any other web server installed. So we take this light HTTPD. We want a log of our queries, yes, that's nice for debugging errors. And um, you can set for the front end, for the web front end, you can set a privacy mode. Uh, if you show everything, you can see where everybody is browsing to and what they are looking at. And that might not be nice. Um, so probably hiding the domains is good enough uh, because then you can't see who is browsing where. Now it will uh, download the actual software. They support quite a few operating systems. You can run it on Ubuntu, Debian, Raspbian. You can run it in Docker if you have like cloud solution or something like that, or maybe you even run a home Docker installation, I don't know. The PyHole will run as your local uh, DNS. So usually your router is doing that job and it will ask some upstream DNS server from your provider or maybe the Google DNS. But in your router, you will have to configure the PyHole actually as the server uh, for name queries. So this here is then the PyHole console after running for quite some time on my machine. Uh, you can see the number of queries and the blocked queries. 12% of the queries were blocked, so these are domains that are, um, yeah, advertisements, malware, whatever, spam, I don't know what. Top permitted domains is some Apple gateway, yeah, because I have a couple of Apple machines, Akamai, uh, content distribution. Top blocked domains is some app measurement and the Google advertisement services. Crashlytics seems to be also something that needs to be blocked. Google Analytics will be blocked, stuff like that. So it's a lot of uh, improvements for your privacy and uh, other things. And taking a look at my router, which is a German, but you can slightly ignore that. Uh, let's quickly log in. We can have a look at the uh, my home network. And I need to do it like this, home network. Home network overview and then network settings. Uh, your maybe you also have Fritzbox in English probably, but um, there should be somewhere in your router there should be something where you can change the IP v4 addresses. And what we do here is um, what I did here is I say my local DNS server is actually the 192.168.184, which is my PyHole server that's already running. And every request will now not go through my network provider's uh, DNS server, but through the PyHole server. If I go to something like uh, cnet.com or something, which is usually loaded with quite a bit of advertisements, you will see that it looks actually pretty clean. There's just the content, I would say. And yeah, this is a nice experience. Um, and it works for almost all things. Some things you will still see, for example, uh, YouTube advertisements will still be passed through that won't be logged. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can query the log and see what we did here. And blacklist certain domains or whitelist if they got blocked and you still want them active. So all in all, I must say that the PyHole is a very good solution for your home. 
because it gives you additional privacy and less advertisements for all the devices that you have. But of course, once you take your smartphone out on the road, you don't have the Pi-hole anymore and um, you need to use a different ad blocking method. But for all the devices at home, this is actually a very good idea. And it's very easy to install. The only major thing that you need to do is change your DNS entries either manually in every device or via your router. So that's it for the Pi hole. Let's look at the next thing to do with your Raspberry Pi. And the second thing that we want to take a look at is the Plex Media Server. Plex is a streaming video, music and general media server which allows you to stream movies or TV series or any other kind of media from a server, here our Raspberry Pi, to mobile devices or your TV or uh, maybe even desktop PCs, whatever you like. There are commercial solutions similar to Plex and Plex is also available for other platforms, uh, Windows, Mac OS, and also certain network attached storage devices. But of course you want to do it the Raspberry Pi way and I already got one Plex server running here in my network. We're using it to watch a uh, lot of DVDs because we don't have a DVD player attached to our TV. So I basically just copy the DVDs over to the Raspberry Pi and then I can watch those things, uh, mainly for the kids. A lot of old kids TV series and movies are cheaply available on DVD. Other stuff we watch on the usual streaming services, but um, this is especially good for things that are not available via streaming. And there are quite a few of these, uh, mainly retro stuff like uh, Young Indiana Jones, Captain Future, The Snorks, stuff from our childhood, and of course being a retro channel here I'd also like to watch the old TV series which are not always available. Um, Plex allows you to watch also stuff like web shows, uh, news content, podcasts and all kinds of things. Uh, even ties into Tidal which is a music streaming service which is I think not that popular, not as popular as Spotify or uh, Apple Music for example but still um, a very nice thing to have and we want to see how to set it up on the Raspberry Pi so here on the left I'm connected to our Raspberry Pi 4 and basically you go to plex.tv which is the main site and let's increase the window here a bit and uh, we can get down here to get started and it says get plex, get plex on your device, yes now it's looking for the version and basically we want to set up the Plex media server. I detected that I have a Mac, but actually I want to install it on a Linux thingy. So what can we choose here? Amazon, Android, all kinds of things. But it's also set to apps, but we want to have the Plex media server. So this looks much more like it. There's a bunch of uh, NAS systems that you can in install it on. Um, but we want to just have a generic Linux. Then I have to choose the Linux distribution, which is for Raspbian and the Raspberry Pi 4. It's Debian 8 Plus or Ubuntu ARM v7. And down here you can also see the download link, so I just right click and say uh, copy link. We go over here to the Raspberry Pi and we'll just download it using uh, wget or curl, doesn't matter, and we just say um, paste. Download the whole package, and then we can simply do sudo dpkg install, dash i it means install, plex media server underscore 116 5 something 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 and it will install the Plex Media Server in a matter of seconds 
and um, after that you will need to copy your media to wherever you like usually not the sd card of the raspberry pi because that will be probably way too small but you can attach simply a usb hard disk to the raspberry pi and then you can set up a plex actually and the way that works is you either download an app for your mac windows whatever system or your mobile device but the other thing that's possible is that you just simply go to app.plex.tv which i've done here for my already running plex service and uh, then you can set it up simply by adding directories to the movies or tv shows section so for example with my network um, i have the following setup there's the folders and there's just simply a mount point which points to all my uh, TV series that I copied from the DVDs over there. Of course you can uh, add as many folders as you like and whenever you have copied some new stuff it will watch that folder and if it doesn't up update then you can also say please rescan the media files and everything will hopefully be okay. And yeah it's a very nice system and i won't play anything here because i will get a copyright strike or something like that but you can probably uh, imagine what it will look like it's just basically a web-based player app here you can install the dedicated apps as well but there's uh, not much different nowadays so this is a very nice thing to have especially if you have a large collection of dvds that you want to have access to without having to well, yeah, juggle all the discs and stuff or maybe make it available to your kids so that they can just watch uh, the series that they want to. And that's a nice solution. Okay, the third and last thing I want to show you today is how to do retro games and uh, here we are in DOSBox on the Raspberry Pi running full screen which is quite definitely possible and uh, we are quickly installing Little Big Adventure from a CD image that I pulled from the CD that I got the other day. I had this game as a kid and uh, yeah I lost basically all my all the good games over the years but uh, found this one and you can basically play it on the Raspberry Pi if you make a CD image of it and uh, just make sure to set the sound card settings in most of or all of the DOS games to Soundblaster Pro if available or Soundblaster um, and then you can start it actually up and it runs reasonably well. This is a game from 1994 it already uses CD-ROM technology runs in SVGA resolution so it's while it's old it's already pretty advanced compared to the other games that we uh, looked at in the past of this channel and this is very nice that the Raspberry Pi now has a level where it can play games from the 486 and Pentium era without any big problems so as you can see the animations are as smooth as they would be on the 486 or Pentium. This is of course an ancient game. It's now 25 years old and uh, it has aged of course a bit but uh, still this is quite a demanding task to uh, simulate a whole PC from that era with all the nitty gritty details. But this is definitely something that you can check out if you are not willing to spend a lot of money in building your own retro PC from the time. Because, well, nostalgia is nice, but uh, not everyone can build their own retro PC. Because it can cost quite a bit of money, obviously. So the alternative would be to run DOSBox, and why not on the Raspberry Pi? So you can just put it next to your TV. Uh, attach it to it, take a mouse and a keyboard and start playing the old games that you probably played also in your youth. 
One thing that I noticed here is some games like Little Big Adventure will have problems when running full screen in the standard configuration of the Raspberry Pi. As you just saw, the text is not always smooth when it's scrolling in. This only happens in full screen mode because uh, when we switch to windowed mode, as I will do in a few seconds here, it's actually pretty smooth. So there are definitely some problems with the graphics driver and here you can see it, it stutters in and uh, when you switch to windowed mode it will uh, go all very smoothly. There is an experimental OpenGL driver for the graphics interface which makes everything run smoother but it has some other minor issues. For example I can't capture that one uh, with my device, so I switch to the standard driver. The next thing apart from DOSBox that you can do and what we'll be looking at here is a Scum VM for playing adventure games. And of course there's a ton of more emulation things like RetroPie etc. Some of which are not yet ported to the Raspberry Pi 4 hardware. But ScumVM and DOSBox run pretty well because they are pretty far removed from the actual accelerated stuff like OpenGL etc. They probably use it for scaling and some things. ScumVM you'll probably know, it supports all the LucasArts and Sierra games and a ton of other adventure games. And the advantage is that this runs basically natively without a huge emulation layer like DOSBox. So it might be faster, but there might be other problems because parts of the game engine might not be implemented completely. But for the standard games like Indiana Jones, Space Quest or Monkey Island, this should be actually pretty well supported there, all in all. And this is of course always a nice thing to have. And uh, again, the Raspberry Pi allows you to play all this stuff from the comfort of your sofa and TV without having to set up a laptop or anything like that. You can of course use a tablet, an iPad or something like that, but if you're using a Raspberry Pi and you bought one, you're probably a tinkerer and you like to run these things also on very tiny and exotic machines and situations. So all you have to do to install ScumVM is to do sudo apt install ScumVM and it will take a couple of seconds to download, it's not that large, and afterwards in your start menu on the Raspberry icon, you will find on the games menu a new icon called ScumVM. You can just fire it up. And then you can uh, install a couple of games, which I already did here, and switch to full screen mode with Alt Enter, I think, um, because otherwise the window is probably too small for you. And then you can simply run a bunch of games. For example, Indiana Jones, which just had its 30th anniversary, and which is of course a classic that you definitely should check out if you haven't ever played it. Especially if you're a fan of the Indiana Jones movies, at least the first three ones, because the fourth one obviously doesn't count. But not only LucasArts games are supported, also Sierra games uh, are supported, and it supports both the AGI and the SCI game engines. And on top of that, there's a couple dozen more adventure games and engines that are supported from minor players in the adventure game industry. So, definitely check out what kind of retro games you can do on your Raspberry Pi if you are into that kind of thing. So these were just a couple of things that are possible with Raspberry Pi and they didn't involve any soldering or tinkering. That will be something for future episode, but you can already check out some of the projects that are on my channel. So because there's like a million things that you can actually do with it, but I think these are actually pretty practical things that everyone with a home network and some interest in entertainment and stuff and privacy and security can actually 
get to run very easily or quite easily and um, for basically free because that's all open source software that we showed on your Raspberry Pi. And well, one last note, as many already noted and there's a ton of videos and reports out there, the Raspberry Pi 4 actually runs really really hot even in the standard idle configuration so I can't almost put the lid on the official case without it overheating and throttling down. Um, this will be probably something that I need to address in a future video, what cooling solutions there are and uh, let's see if maybe some Linux or firmware updates will alleviate that maybe by downclocking it further or similar things or I don't know. Let's see, but still it's a very nice and extremely powerful machine by now. So definitely check it out and have some thoughts about what you can do with it. And that's it for today. I would like if you would subscribe or leave a comment or share or dislike or whatever. Um, but I would be very glad if you interacted with me in some way here and hopefully see you back for the next video. So have a nice evening.